Welcome back. Next up is Oper. He's vice president of the technical committee at the LoRa Alliance, and he's going to tell you everything around the developments of the LoRa standard. Enjoy his talk. Hello, everyone. This is Alperi again. I'm the vice chair of the board and chair of the technical committee in LoRa Alliance, and also the director of advanced technology development and activity. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will be talking about our latest link layer specification, LoRa 1 version 1.0.4. Just to start by recapping our architecture, um, the link layer specification is at the core of our architecture. It runs between the end device and the network in order to provide a secure and reliable transport layer for the applications writing about that. Most of the uh, link layer terminates on the so-called network server, whereas some of the signaling goes all the way to the joint server, and some of the metadata is pushed to the application server. As such, you also see some part of the link layer extending beyond the network server as well. Above that, we have the transport layer facilities such as multicast management and fragmentation, and even IETF SHIC protocol in order to provide transport for IP layer uh, applications. And also various application adaptations uh, writing above that in order to have a native way of running those applications above, uh, above uh, LoRaWAN. And below the link layer, we have the regional parameters that provides all the file-related parameters in order to adapt uh, LoRaWAN link layer to various regions in the world. If we look at where our specs, how our specs have been um, developing, the very first version was published back in the year 2015, version 1.0. It was followed by version 1.0.1 in 2016, which came with various clarifications and corrections. And then 102 came in in 2016 again, and that's where we started separating the regional parameters from the uh, link layer specification. And later in 2018, 1.0.3 came in, and that's where we start, we have refined the class B and also make it a normative part of our specification. Before that date, it has been informative and or more so experimental. And with the market experience we have gained, we were able to make it a normative part of our spec. And at the end of 2020, we have published version 1.0.4. And in the next slide, I will be talking about various new, uh, new things that came along with this uh, version. Now, those of you who are following our spec development closely would know that back in 2017, we have also published version 1.1, which came with uh, uh, fundamental new uh, features, such as uh, additional, uh, additional type of roaming and some security improvements. Now, back then, seeing that the industry did not really make the jump to version 1.1 and they were still building products based on 1.0 series, what we did was we, we went back and we imported some of the new developments in 1.1 back into the 1.0 series, which gave us all the way to the 1.0.4. Moving forward, 1.0.4 is the last uh, version of the 1.0 series, and now we are going back to uh, building our specification based on the 1.1 series. And if we look at what is new in uh, 1.0.4, we see a number of improvements on the Class B, most notably being able to support indoor gateways. Normally, the gateways, in order to support Class B, they need to synchronize with the GPS and they need to have GPS reception. Now, what we did is, in order to support indoor gateways, we provided a way uh, to randomize uh, loosely synchronized uh, beacons so that uh, multiple indoor gateways transmitting at the same time would not create interference with each other. And that opened the door for supporting um, Class B even through indoor gateways. And on the security side, uh, now we are mandating 32-bit frame counters. And also uh, we're mandating the frame counters are um, kept in persistent part of the memory, like NVRAM, so that they are maintained together with the rest of the security context across reboots, even for the ABP devices, so that the frame counts would never go back, which would otherwise open uh, various threats. 
And also we mandated uh, the device nonce values are monotonically incrementing so that the, the job of the joint server is now much easier in order to keep track of the dev nonce for preventing replay attacks, which can be launched by using the same dev nonce. And then we have made various clarifications and refinements across the specification, such as describing how class A, B, and C can coexist uh, on the ADR management side, um, making sure the MAC commands are treated as mandatory, and how the adder prefix is defined in the link there spec in alignment with its definition in the backend spec, so on and so forth. And in addition to the changes we have done in the specification itself, together with the spec, we have also decided that moving forward, the link layer specification will always be published together with the reference implementation and the LoRaWAN certification test tool and the certification program. Now, being able to push both the reference implementation and the certification packages, they enabled us to uh, bootstrap the device makers. As soon as they get the link spec, they also have all the rest of the tools they need from the LoRa Alliance for being able to start their development. And the certification protocol spec is also a new uh, newcomer for our protocol suite. This is the uh, protocol definition or the protocol that is used during the certification procedure in order to facilitate the, uh, the execution of the tests. So this collection is now uh, made available. Um, you can download from this link. And moving forward, any future versions of the link there spec will always come with the same components in order to make the life of uh, device makers and solution uh, makers easy. And while talking about the LinkedIn specification, I would like to also briefly um, describe what we're uh, doing on the technical recommendations side. So um, in order to provide guidance for the link layer implementers or the device makers and solution makers, we're also generating a so-called technical recommendation, which covers numerous topics in order to guide the implementers. Um, we start by discussing do's and don'ts of um, how to set and manage various identifiers such as uh, device uh, EUI, device address, app key, um, app S key, dev nonce, and join EUI. <clears throat> now, uh, even though we precisely cover the details of how to manage such identifiers or how to set them inside the link layer specification, we realize the uh, implementers do not necessarily read the whole spec, especially when they have open source implementations. Nevertheless, it's very important how these identifiers are set in order not to uh, uh, create unnecessary problems uh, for, for the deployments. And we precisely uh, describe how these identifiers should be set, such as using IEEE OUIs or generating dev adders out of the net IDs assigned to networks, so on and so forth. And we also provide guidance on the join procedure, the, the frequency of uh, operating the join uh, procedure, and how to detect connection loss, and how to manage the frame counters so that they are not only used for uniquely identifying frames, but also for uh, detecting loss of connectivity on the network side and how to preserve the contacts, uh, the linked contacts across reboots, et cetera. Um, this is work in progress. We are hoping we should be able to publish this work in the coming, I would say, couple months. And, and this will be just the very first version of the document, and we will be building on top of that, adding more and more guidance moving forward. So that concludes my presentation on the uh, latest link there specification, version 1.0.4. So those of you who are not a member of the LoRa Alliance, I would highly encourage you to join the LoRa Alliance and also the um, technical committee work um, and, and be part of our journey uh, unlocking the massive IoT. Thank you for listening.